The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. When I was younger in my faith, I had a big problem. A problem that I am sure that millions of Christians are struggling with today. I had a constant fear of hell. I would be sometimes scared to sleep in case I woke up there. It was torturing me. I just had a constant anxiety about it. And that is not the Christian life. One day I would feel like I am going to heaven. And the next day, I would feel like I am not. The day would be going perfectly fine for me. And then I would tell a lie or commit a sin. And then I would feel like I am going to hell. But that is not the Christian life. You are not saved one hour and lost the next hour. You are not saved one day and lost the next day. You are not going to heaven one day and going to hell the next. I really struggled with this. I had a serious problem with fear and anxiety because of my lack of understanding. I know firsthand what God meant when He spoke through Hosea the prophet when He said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I was perishing in anxiety about hell because of a lack of knowledge. I grew in my knowledge and I focused on two things. Where was my assurance of salvation? Dealing and attacking sin. First, my assurance of salvation was not in the Lord Jesus Christ. My assurance of salvation was in me, in my behavior. My assurance of salvation was in a little list of little do's and don'ts. My assurance of salvation was in my own morality. My assurance of salvation was resting in me. And unfortunately, millions of Christians are in hell right now because of this very reason. They are in hell right now because they were trusting in something other than the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are in hell right now because they were trusting in themselves. They were trusting in their own goodness and morality being their qualifications for heaven. And that is a lie. There are some right now who are in hell because they were trusting in their religion. And there are some who are in the pit of hell right now because they were trusting in their own ability to follow the law. Your assurance in heaven today needs to be in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross that you cannot add to or subtract. That is where your assurance of salvation should be. Secondly, my goal was to deal and attack sin. You and I Christians have a problem with sin. I came to the realization that I am a sinner and you need to come to that realization that you are a sinner. But the wonderful thing is, Jesus came to die for sinners. Sin is a problem. But thank God that He has made a provision for us to overcome this problem of sin. John wrote 1 John to Christians, and in this passage of Scripture eight times he mentions the problem of sin that we have. 1 John 1, 7 through to 10. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. 1 John 2, 1 and 2. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Eight times sin is mentioned. That is our problem today. Sin disrupts your fellowship with God. If you are a Christian today, and God seems far from you today, sin is the reason and that is an awful thing it is an awful thing for someone to be a christian and not actually enjoy god it is an awful thing for someone to be a christian and for them not to have the joy of the lord in their life sin will steal your joy and will make you miserable it is an awful thing for someone to be a christian and live in a constant state of fear and the one thing that causes all these things is sin we are to fellowship with the lord to have an intimate relationship with Him. And what puts a barrier up between God and His child? It is sin. You need to ask yourself, why am I like this? Why do I have such a fear of death? Why do I not enjoy the Christian life? Why do I feel so far away from God? Why do I feel so alone when the Bible assures me that God will never leave me nor forsake me? You need to ask yourself, why am I so, so miserable? And the answer is, it's sin. The wonderful thing is, 
that God, and not you, has the power to this problem of sin. And the answer is the person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that goes back to my first point, assurance of salvation is in Jesus. There are so many churches, and even believers, who are knowingly or unknowingly bypassing the answer to the problem of sin. The only answer to sin is Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 7 But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. The wonderful blood of Jesus cleanses every sin of every believer, so that we won't be punished in the depth of hell. 1 John 2, 1 and 2 My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus is now your advocate. So right now, sitting at God's right hand, is Jesus Christ speaking on your behalf. If your salvation is truly in Christ, Jesus Christ is speaking for you. He is representing you, stating that this individual is covered by my blood. I paid the price for her sins or his sins. He belongs in heaven for all eternity. How does that make you feel? To know that Jesus is speaking up for you like an advocate in the court, before God and all the holy angels, pointing at you in front of all the courts of heaven, stating, that one is redeemed, that one is blood washed, that one there is destined for heaven. And this is why I said, unfortunately, millions of Christians are in hell right now because of that very reason. They are in hell because they were trusting in themselves or other things rather than Jesus for their salvation. He is not one of many ways. He is the one and only way. If your faith is in Jesus, and if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't live in fear. Rest in Jesus. Don't live with the fear of hell. Rest in Jesus. God will not turn you away if Jesus is on your side. He has paid the price for you. God, in all His fury, has poured out all of His fury on Christ, and not on me, and not on you. There is nothing left for us to pay. Jesus Christ is the propitiation of our sins. So how can I restore my relationship with God? How can I receive the joy of the Lord which sin has robbed me? 1 John 1, 9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful because He will never abandon His promise and just because He already punished our sins to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, which means He treats us like we have never done it or sinned. What on earth are you waiting for? Confess your sins today. Believe wholeheartedly in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross today. Don't live in fear or anxiety or worry of hell. Jesus is your advocate. Jesus is pleading your case because he paid the price. Sleep with the assurance of Christ. Jesus knows that you are like a flower, quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. But he still knows you and cares for you. We are like vapor in the wind. But guess what? He still sees us and knows us. We are like a grain of sand on the beach. But Jesus can spot us. He knows us. He chose to die for us. I always wonder what we have done to deserve the love that Jesus is showing us or has shown us. And I can find nothing. We have not done anything to deserve the love. Jeremiah 31.3, King James Version, says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness I have drawn thee. Jesus loves you more than you could ever imagine. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish.